worthy by design. Hello there, it is such a delight that you joined us on today's edition of Worthy by Design, brought to you by Advent Cable Network Nigeria, ACNN TV. On this show, we focus on the journey from girlhood to womanhood and everything in between. I am Ibera Chims. Welcome. Now, the daily routine of a woman keeps her juggling between chores, from washing to cooking, then pregnancy comes, delivery, getting the kids sorted, and of course, being present and actively involved in the other room. You know what I mean. Now, you agree with me that running through this could be draining, thereby putting the lady under constant pressure with little or no rest. Now, I'm calling on all the men. If this is a state of your lover girl, what language would you be speaking? Yes, the language of love. That is our focus for today. And with me in the studio is Barista Chims Nzeag. He is a trauma care therapist. It's so good to have you, sir. Thank you for having me on the show. Okay, so we're talking about this whole love issue, right? Love. You know, women go, th we, the introduction has said women go through a lot of pressure. Now, how can the man's love help balance out or, you know, take care of some of this pressure that women go through? Okay, um, the language of love and the man balancing out the love. Mm. I must start by saying that love is help. Mm. Love is help. Okay. You can't say you love me and you can't help me. Then what love are you preaching? What love are you talking about? You know, but people say, you know, they have different love languages. There's, you know, um, giving and I, all of that. I agree. Okay. I am adding help as a love language. <laughs> And I this one is all in capacity, it covers the all others. Mm -hmm. Help is a love language, okay. whether we like it or not. You love a woman and then she's carrying firewood and carrying a baby at the back and then you're marching behind her and then you, tell, you claim to love her. What love language are you, are you preaching? What are you speaking? So help is a language of love. Now, let me take you back to the Bible. The Bible said, I'll give you a help meet for you. Mm. The woman is a helper. And that is to show that the man is doing something. The woman comes to assist. Mm. The woman is not there to die. <laughs> so the woman is to be assisted as well. Okay. As much as she's rendering help, she too needs help. Mm. Okay. Now, someone comes to help you when you are actually doing something. Mm. Then someone can lend an assistance. So it doesn't mean you should so leave all the work. Uh, you get a help and then you say, okay, thank God you have, I have a help now. You can take over everything. Before the man married the woman, let me come to that. The man was washing his clothes. Mm -hmm. The man would eat and he wash his plates. Mm -hmm. The man would sweep his house. Mm -hmm. Though there are some men that don't sweep their house in two months. Mm -hmm. They sweep maybe once in three months when the <laughs> lady is visiting. <laughs> I will come, uh, let me leave it at that. So, but the man was doing all this. So why, how come that the man gets into the marriage and the man feels I have arrived? Mm. If I, I, I had a, a particular situation at hand where the lady said... The man said, I have married you. All the chores in the house is your responsibility. Mine is to keep money on the table. When you need money, tell me. Everything. Now, the woman does everything down to the man will come. The woman is tired at 11 p.m. The man will hang leg. Please do my nails. Mm. And this woman is overwhelmed. Mm. So I s insist that the language of love is a language of help. Okay, so um, now I'm, I'm, I'm not seeing, you know, there are people that sometimes women are like Jackie. It's like she has a lot of strength. She can go to the market, come Sorry, back. let me correct food. that. A woman is not Jackie. <laughs> Some of those women doing those things are not happy. Mm. Many of them are not happy. Many of them are sad. They are dying inside. Mm. I have a woman who calls stick. 
because the woman walks around the clock. One day, the woman broke down, and I told them, stick is about to dry up. <laughs> Stick is about to dry up. So most women are under a lot of pressure. But, you know, the fact that they don't show it, they look like, you know, everything is under control. Now, let me tell How you. How does the man now get to know women that? Women are oh. under pressure of the husband, pressure of the children, household pressure, work pressure, societal pressure, even church pressure. Mm. A woman, let me start from the last. A woman is in a committee in the church and has to attend all the meetings. A woman in the house, in the society, needs to attend to some functions. Mm. A woman in the, in the workplace needs to do her work to make f money for the family. The children are there to take care of. The husband is there to take care of. She's still there to cook food. Mm. Irrespective of the, there are some men that insist that it's their wife that will serve them their food, mm. no matter the amount of house assistance you have. So most women, if I, I can categorically say that 80% of women are under a lot of pressure. But they are not showing it and they are not speaking out does not mean that they are not under pressure. So how do they get love, this love you call help, to come to their aid? Well, housework and raising a home and a family, is a, it involves both parties to be actively involved. The man and the woman. I have read through the Constitution of Nigeria. <laughs> I have read through the Bible. I have read through all the laws. I have not seen anywhere that says a, a man should not sweep the house. Mm. I have not seen anywhere that says a man should not do the, wash the, do the clothes, the laundry. Mm. Should not wash the children's school, school uniform. Should not wash the children's clothes. I have not also seen a place that said the woman should not lie down on bed and then the man was serving breakfast in bed. <laughs> so at some point, the woman should be pampered. At some point, the woman should be shown love. The woman should be relaxed and taken care of. Mm. Not go through this pressure. And that is why you notice that a lot of women die very early. Mm. I have checked statistics. Most women die because they are undergoing pressure daily. And you know what this pressure does is that it affects them mentally, it affects them emotionally, it affects them physically. That's why you see also all manner of sickness here and there because of this pressure. Mm. So, but my, my, my issue would now be, should she just keep taking in all of this pressure? You know, because we are Africans and they believe, as Africans, a lot of people believe that all of these things the woman is doing, they are not out of place. They are her primary responsibilities in the home. And when she is faced with all of these pressures, she hears that African voice in her head. Should she keep taking in all of those pressures? Or how can she cry out for help? I, I, ha I believe in tradition. Okay. But you know, I also have a challenge with tradition. In Africa and Nigeria in particular, we we'll practice selective tradition. We choose, the, one to, okay. we choose the tradition to select and practice. And when it, 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 it now affects us directly, I will when see it's that it, when it's not convenient <laughs> for us, we drop the tradition. We remember that we are children of God. Mm -hmm. But when it, is, when it is convenient, I am a traditionalist. I am in my tradition says, what of the, how many things, your tradition says you should also be killing fowl every day. Why haven't you been, why are you not killing fowl every day and be pouring the blood? After all, that's your tradition. I, I encountered a young lady who was yet to, who was about to get married, so the, the fiancé visited. And she served him food casually, and the man said no, that in his place, you kneel down and hold the water for him to wash hand. And after that, you kneel down and hold the food for him to eat. Hmm. I won't mention the state. And the lady met me, says, sir, this thing still be morning. That means I'll be kneeling down for this part to be eating <laughs> for the rest of my life. sister, the choice is yours. Choose either to be kneeling down or advise yourself. But the truth is, some of those cultures are no longer in existence. But because one man wants to feel it, the major problem is inferiority complex. Most people feel inferior, they feel, okay, by the time I begin to do that thing, she feels we're on the same level. Mm. It is not right. Mm. Now, if you help her I out. wash plates. I, I'm telling you, I, wa I wash plates in my house. Mm. I'll finish eating and people will pack their dishes and I'll go and do it. It doesn't change who I am. 
I am still the head of the house. So please, can you can you say that to the men out there? They need I am to still. Hear that. I, yes, <laughs> I do laundry. I wash my wife's clothes. The thing we got, I'll come back. Start to, in my busy schedule, I still make out time. I do the I do the laundry, and I'll hang them. I wash my daughter's clothes. I iron. Despite how busy my schedule is, and it still doesn't change who I am. It has not removed the barrister in my name. Mm. Neither have you removed anything. Now, the first thing is, as couples, they need to talk about these things. Mm. The woman should not die in silence. Mm. Take him to bed at night. Attend to him very well. Then, bros, let's discuss this matter. As you can see, I'm gradually getting down. Assist me. No reasonable human. Reasonable, in quotes. No reasonable man mm. will not want to assist her. But the thing is, most times the woman will tell you, eh, he will not agree. Talk first, let him not agree. Mm. It's a matter of discussion. Mm. It's a matter of communication. Communi communication, communication, conversation, and coming to a compromise. I know a family that this issue occurred, and by the time they discussed, the man said, okay, I'll, every Saturday morning I'll do the laundry before I leave. You clean the house. And... Everybody moves. But when the man, even on that Saturday, the man is at home, he's doing nothing. He's waiting for 12.30 to watch Mayu match. And he's sitting in the parlor, hanging his legs, and the woman is sweeping, and he will raise leg for her to sweep under his leg. I mean, the same woman will sweep the house. She will do the food, and then she will serve you. When you finish eating, she will, she will clean up. She will go to the market. And she will still serve you Plus, again. Fear God again. I fear God more. Just fear God more. <laughs> Okay, so it's important for Co families to discuss this issue. Discuss the woman should issue. not die in silence. Mm. I say category, woman, you didn't marry a man to come and die. Mm. You didn't marry a man to come and die. So speak out. Communicate. When you're tired, call him bros, whichever name you call him. Please help me do this. I can't do it. Mm. Communicate. And then how you communicate matters a lot. Okay. Okay. Some of our sisters don't know how to talk. Okay. Okay. You don't come and talk to me disrespectfully and expect me to carry broom and sweep the house. And if you shout, finish, now sweep the house. Mm. So communicate in a lovely manner mm. and also in a language of love. Mm. And you see that. But is it my, there's a way. You see men. Men, forget about the gragra. -gra. Here they are very soft. There is a way you calm him down, talk to him, give him what he wants. The man will be at your back. Mm, amazing. So, okay, now there's the aspect of, you know, the woman, the woman having to raise the conversation, right? Now, there's also the other arm. You are seeing, physically, you're seeing that this woman is drained. What is the importance of sensitivity? You're saying that she's just, she knows, she just keep, she keeps pushing. How important is the man's sensitivity to the woman's plight in, you know, leveling out the whole pressure? I might like to say that sensitivity is also a gift of the spirit. <laughs> 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 you know, every man should be sensitive to his home. Now, what do I mean? You should be sensitive to the hand. The happenings happening. in, the, in the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you should come to the house and say, okay, I'm, I'm forced to give this example. One day my wife was tired, goes into the bathroom. I had had my bath there and I discovered that, okay, this place needs attention. She goes into the bathroom. As I just walked into the room, I saw that she was in the bathroom struggling to clean. I told her, I have seen it, it needs attention. Just come out, I will handle it. Now, every man should be able to know when the wife has the capacity to do something and when she's not, when she does not have the capacity and step in. Observe your wife. That is actually, the two, that will say the two have become one. Observe. Know when one part of your body is not feeling fine and attend to it. The same way you feel headache and attend to it. The same way you should feel the pulse of your wife. Oh, this woman is tired. Let me help her do this thing. She carries broom to, do the, to, to clean the house. You tell her, no, just leave it. I'll do it. So every man should pay attention. But it's just that most men are not attentive. Mm. They are from house to work, from work to bed, and they sleep. They don't even know what is happening in the house. And the truth is, the woman might be strong today, she may not be strong tomorrow. Mm. So you should be able to know 
and be sensitive to her feelings as well. Mm. There are some things women do. They may have a feeling of, I wish my husband can, uh, can assist. assist in doing this thing. My wife has a unique way of telling me to do something. No need to afford the house. I say, she's saying, I wish somebody can help me sweep the house. <laughs> Who again will help you sweep the house? No need to afford the house. So, you know, that is how it works. A man should be able to read in between what the woman is saying, read in between lines, observe, understand that, okay, this woman needs this thing and do it. Mm. Don't wait till she talks, she may not talk. Not every woman has the spirit of speaking out. There are some that once you fool their head, they can speak mm. and spew. But there is not every woman that has that capacity. So mm. once they don't, oh man, step in and assist your wife. Mm. Amazing. Men. Are you people hearing you step in and assist your wife? So he should not be specially invited. He should see the need and step in. And uh, sorry, let me add this. You know, as men, we should also be careful. Because how we treat our wives is how our sons will treat their wives. Hmm. Because these children are learning. Let me tell you a very quick story. Sorry, I'm taking your time. A man when it's time for morning devotion in the house, the man will stay back, come out 20 minutes into the devotion. So he has only one son who was, I think, about three at that time. So one day the man traveled, the mother had called out the children, the sisters were out, the other sisters were out, the, the, the mother was out, the boy was still lying on the bed. Till at least almost 10, 15 minutes into the devotion, the boy strolls out into the living room and sat for prayer as the man of the house. His father is not there. So by the time they finished the devotion, the mother asked him, why did you come out late? He said, men come out late for prayers. Now, this man didn't teach this boy this thing by speaking to him. It's the attitude of the man and the boy had learned it. So how we react in the house, also as men, towards our wives and doing things in the house is what our children will learn. Mm. So if as a man, you don't do chores at home and then you feel it's, that, it's, it's a responsibility of the woman, your son will grow up to see that, okay, this is, and then you will raise daughters who are stressed. Because mm -hmm. they will go into a man's house with a mindset Feeling. that it, it is my work to do. Mm. So and so the communication aspect of asking for help from the husband yes. will be completely cut off because they feel that. My mother never, you hear ladies say, my mother didn't do it, so it's, a, it's the way to go. Mm. Hmm. Now let's take this a step further, right? Another issue that a lot of people have. Okay, let me start with a story. There was this, I heard recently someone told me the story of a lady who was pregnant, an, an only child who was pregnant, and the husband called his mother to inform the mother that oh, his wife is pregnant. And that the woman is now very lazy, she doesn't do anything around the home, she just sleeps, you know, and all of that. And the mother said, he shouldn't mind the wife, that the wife is just being lazy. So the, la the lady, you know, continued the cycle of, you know, preg pregnancy can be very interesting. You know, she sleeps, she just wakes up late. Sometimes she, she's not able to have a bath. She's in bed, you know, three days before she's able to stand up, have a bath and all of that. And the man still felt like, you're lazy. That's the voice of his mother, right? She's being lazy. So this continued till she was, I think they said she was eight months and three weeks. She was crying at night, probably it was labor. She was crying at night, calling the husband and the husband, you know, just dismissed everything. Only for the lady to keep quiet and he thought, ah, finally, she has slept. And this was her final sleep. She died in her sleep. So when he called neighbors in to check, she was already dead. Took her to the hospital. They said she had been dead for like 12 hours. So now this, this takes me to my next question about pregnancy. How can men come in to make the load of pregnancy easier for their wives to carry? So we avoid unnecessary casualties and unnecessary heartbreaks. Oh, a very pathetic story you have there. If I know the family of the girl, 
I will tell them to arrest the guy, arrest the mother <laughs> for murder. They killed the woman. Mm. Now, pregnancy is a very delicate stage in a woman's life. Nobody receives training to go into pregnancy. And the mm. truth is that no two pregnancies are the same. Mm. The doctors tell us. No two pregnancies are the same. Now, the challenge is a man, once your wife takes in, you carry her like egg. It is no longer the same wife who goes about 24 hours doing things in the house. Because she's not just her normal self. There are a number, a number of abnormal things going on around her. <laughs> That's the truth. Her hormones are very sensitive. Her senses are hyperactive. A number of things. So at such time, every man, I must say, should be close to their wives. Life is not all about money. I think last week a lady mentioned she, had, um, she was pregnant for twins. Her husband was busy traveling up and down. And she was bitter. So I told her, but he's making money for the family. She said, what nonsense money? If I die, who will, he who will eat the money? Who will enjoy the money? So at that time, the woman needs all attention she can get. She needs all care. Even if you go to good hospitals, not what we have now, that is so unfortunate that our healthcare system is, has collapsed. They will tell you at this point, there are certain things she shouldn't bend in some way, she shouldn't do this, she shouldn't do that. And when she's not doing it, it's either you provide an adequate care for her, of someone who be doing all those things, or you, the man, you step in and do it. So in a situation where you are so busy with the issues of life, make sure you get an adequate care for her. So you don't expect a woman who is pregnant to go the normal cycle. She goes ordinarily when all was well. And then you should pay a little more attention to her. When she complains of, um, of um, maybe ache on the ties, you should be able to try to ask, inquire further, because it could be something serious. Like that lady, perhaps she was in labor. And then for the mother-in-law saying she's been lazy, ask the mother-in-law at what age she gave birth last. <laughs> yes, and what generation she was part of. Because things have changed and times have evolved because it is no longer as it is. That's true. As it used to be then, mm. things are no longer as it is now, as it was then. And medical science have also developed beyond what was obtainable then. Those days, you see a pregnant woman harvesting cassava. You can't try it now because there are a lot of factors that have I changed see. the normal, the, course, the of normal, the normal course of life. The normal course of life those days is no longer the same. A lot of things, including diet and the rest. Now we, look, we take a lot of um, carbonated food and all. Unlike those days, they eat natural things. So you can't even compare. So for this woman, you need, she needed adequate attention from the husband who felt it was disturbance. If you are not ready to carry the load of pregnancy, then you are not ready for marriage. Such a man should not go into marriage because mentally and physically and psychologically he wasn't prepared. So at pregnancy, every man, if you are giving your wife 20% attention, double it, and make it go by go beyond double, make it 60%. Because at that time, she's carrying not just your child but your future. Mm. So every man needs to be involved. 100% involved, not just be, need to be involved. Because you can be calling her, how are you? That is involvement. I mean, both physically, emo be emotionally involved with her, be physically involved with her, and be involved with her in by all standards. Go out and buy her suya, let her eat. Go out and take care of her. Let this woman feel loved. She, she needs it. That's the kind of help. If she calls you, I need this, buy it. Mm. Don't complain. Mm. After all, whatever mm. is she's going through, you cost it. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, we'll go on a very short break. When we return, there is a lot more to be talked about. Do stay with us. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Governance is the act of God. 
Even the system of government we have now is taken from the Bible. The Lord your God is your king. That's executive government. He is your lawmaker. That's legislature. He is your righteous judge. is judiciary. So he's the king of kings and the lord of lords. Nebuchadnezzar said he reigns in the affairs of men, he enthrones and he dethrones. Therefore, Christians must be involved in every aspect of governance at every level. Martin Luther King Jr. was the one who spearheaded the revolution of the black civil rights movement in America That's that right. gave recognition to the blacks in America to today. He was the one who had a dream that put them to where they are now. And so he was a full-time Baptist gentleman. Martin Luther was the one that led the revolution against Roman Catholicism and opened up Protestantism that brought up the Renaissance and the Enlightenment and the development in the arts and the sciences today. So we as Christians, we are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. We must directly take charge of governance. Politics or governance is running the affairs of a world created by our God. Worthy by design. Welcome back. We have been talking with the sensational barrister Chims Nzago. We've had a very interesting conversation about, you know, helping the language of love and the fact that the man needs to be 100% involved in the family and especially the period of pregnancy because whatever she's going through, he made it happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's go deeper into this conversation, right? Now, there's the period of pregnancy, of being involved, and all of that. Now, the result is out. The children are here, right? The mother is, or the woman, is believed to be the nurturer of the children. You know, so it's really not the man's business. Do you agree the man, that the man shouldn't be involved in raising the children? Okay, be before I answer that, you see pregnancy through the childbirth and raising the child can be traumatic. Mm. I've come across a number of trauma cases that has to do with pregnancy, childbirth, and raising the child. It can be traumatic for the woman because she is under undue pressure. Mm. A woman goes to bed by 11 a.m. or beyond. She needs to be awake by 5 a.m. to prepare the children for school. And as at 5 a.m. when she's still awake, for families that do family devotion, maybe they do family devotion, the man goes back to bed. The man makes breakfast, the woman makes breakfast, makes lunch, that children will take to school. And in most cases, the woman will still take them to school. Mm and maybe finish and come back, prepare for work, leave for work, around 2 o'clock she's on school run. Mm. Go to pick the children, bring them back, ensure they eat and get back to work and comes back in the evening and she's preparing for dinner again. One person, somebody's child that was once pampered. It mm. is totally wrong. Mm -hmm. Family should sit down and highlight these things. If you can't afford a school bus, let the woman prepare the children for school, let the man be the one doing the school run. Mm -hmm. Except in extreme situations where the man is not in town, mm. understandable. But where you ab ab abdicate, the, abdicate the, same, the whole responsibility to the woman, it is inhuman mm. and it is wicked. Mm. It is wicked. The woman will not die tomorrow, you're going to marry another wife. <laughs> so the man should be involved. Child raising, child raising is not for the woman alone, mm. it is both for the man and for the woman. Growing up, my mother will tell us, sit down, we'll sit down for five minutes and we'll jump out again. But the moment we hear daddy is coming, who born you? You are just yourself by all standard. So what am I saying? It's, it is the responsibility of the two. It is not bad for the man to wake up and bathe the children in the morning and get them ready for school. In fact, I think at some point we should, we should make a law. That at least for every one, in every two months, so for one month, men should prepare the children, take them to school. Most men will leave their marriages. <laughs> the man should prepare, just if once in a month, the men should bathe them in the morning, prepare them for school, and then send them to school. And so they feel, they, they can, you they know, can have actually a taste of, have a taste of what the women go through. True, true. I am not a woman advocate, but then I have to be. For you appreciate now. them better. <laughs> <laughs> because you, you understand the pressure the woman is going through. And then you, uh, I will tell you a story that what happened to me. I was opportune to be in the kitchen for one month. Oh my mm -hmm. God. <laughs> it wasn't funny. After that period, I began to appreciate women very well. 
because it wasn't just cooking the food that was my problem. You are making breakfast, you are thinking of what to make for lunch, you are thinking of what to make for dinner. That, that alone can, be, can drain any person. That period that was so drained, Kai, it wasn't funny. So now I, 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 I began to imagine what we, every woman goes through. And I'm like, so this is what our mothers and women and wives go through on a daily. The woman is making breakfast. You are talking to her, she's thinking of her. What will they eat in the afternoon? What will they have for dinner? And one irresponsible man will cross leg and, and be shouting, serving my food, serving my food. You know kitchen is there, now go and serve yourself. Most men can't even boil hot water. Mm. So r child raising is a responsibility of the two. Mm. Talk to yourselves. Okay, I will, bed, I will prepare them for school in the morning, give them breakfast. Please, you help us do the school run. So by the period the man is going to do the school run, the woman can put herself together for the day. But a woman is she's got, coming back by 9 o'clock, uh, 9 a.m., trying to prepare for the day. And the day is already far spent. Mm. So she comes out looking like a shadow of herself. That is why I see most of our mothers, are all, all, they have wrinkles all over. Their faces are already shredded because the pressure of life is putting a lot on them. The men are looking very young, wearing jeans up and true, down. True, 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 true. Wearing jeans up and down, t-shirt, I'll be doing fine boy. Meanwhile, the women are passing through a lot. Mm. So let's swap roles for one week and then see how it is. So it is a collective responsibility. The man should be involved, the woman should be involved. Mm. Because child raising, if you leave it to the woman alone, they will start quoting Bible for you. Mm. A, an irresponsible child is an abomination of the wife, mother, and then a, a, a wise child is the pride of the father. I mean, yes, it is scriptural, but then, father, you have left your role, and that is why that child is irresponsible. Mm. So everybody should be involved. It is not the role of the woman alone. Mm. I have not seen where it is said that it's women that raise children. Mm. So the men should get involved. I think it's even important because it will give the child a balanced upbringing. You know, I, I have a challenge in our time. Why? We lay so much emphasis on the girl child. Girl child this, girl child that, girl this, woman this. And she's and so responsible. She's so responsible. Nobody is talking about the boy child. Nobody is talking about proper raising of a boy child. And when you, don't, when you raise a girl child, an irresponsible boy child will come for the girl child and it becomes a problem. And now becomes an irresponsible and that, husband. And becomes an irresponsible husband and will have abuse and the rest of it. So I think we should also be deliberate about the boy child. Mm. Let's raise the boy child well. So that the boy child grows to know that, okay, house chores and raising a child is not for the wife alone. Mm. It's, not for the, it's not the latest thing. You hear it's the latest thing. It's not our thing. Mm. So there should be proper foundation and it starts from the home mm. and churches should also teach this mm. okay I, I i love that aspect of it so i'll just hold you up on that right raising the boy child now let's assume that this has been missed right they missed it at the point of raising that somebody's husband and the woman is undergoing all of this pressure right how can we now train, <laughs> train this old man to become a responsible husband to this responsible woman who is under pressure? Now, you ask the man, will you allow your sister undergo the pressure of putting somebody's daughter? The pressure allowing somebody's daughter go through, if it was your sister, will you do the same? We are very selfish. Mm. We will not allow our sisters go through the same pressure, but we allow our wives go through the same pressure. Because that one is not somebody's daughter mm. or somebody's sister. The man has grown. When we organize marriage seminars in churches, we should not be talking about love your wife. Do the, some of these things should be talked about. When we organize singles connect and singles um, everything seminars. seminars, we should also talk about these things. Mm. Because I have a challenge with singles programs. Most times it is one-sided. Yes. We only hit the ladies mm. and the men go scot-free. Mm. But forgetting that it is too it is it is two-sided. So raising the irresponsible boy that have come to become a man, mm. we still have to talk to the boy. 
let's get help we should talk about these things just the way you are doing now i want to commend you people the way you are doing now let's talk about let's sensitize our men let's if we have if in a for, in four as women meet let's tell our men that they need to be responsible by assisting them yes it is good to hustle and make money and we also forget that this thing we are making noise about we making money there are some men that all they do is to lie down and place uh, and, and press phone why they make women supply the money in the house so in that situation the woman provides financial assistance she provides the physical help she provides the emotional help she provides the other room help one person and the man relaxes and answer head of house and when he comes out he will find you and be, and be sampling meanwhile another person is doing the work so we it is time we create awareness to the men the church should start it organizations should start it and in the home women people are part of the problem speak out don't die in silence you die the man will find another babe marry and life goes on nothing nothing happen what about six months? Another baby is on the pipeline and he, he move. So in Nigeria, they say we move, we move. <laughs> and that's the end. So if you are going serious pressure, speak out. But speak out in love. Mm. I must say, speak out in love. Mm. Thank you so much. So raising children is a collective responsibility and the men must be actively involved i really like that part you know where we have to just swap roles for like one week i think yeah, every family not soon, anyway. <laughs> i think every family should try that out just swap roles for one week let's see how let's see the results you get you'll be surprised the men will do very good right very good and let's try it out it's just laziness <laughs> okay so um we're drawing to, the, um, to a close, right? So, but there's um, something I would want us to talk about. How can the men bring out the best in their wives, in their women? How can they bring out, you know, when, when a man is going to marry a lady, you know, they said, I saw a beautiful flower. <laughs> <laughs> in our African city, right? I saw a beautiful flower and we came to pluck that flower. So when a man has finally plucked that flower and taken the flower to his house, you know, the responsibility God gave up, um, what's his name, Adam, Adam, was to tend the garden. How can the man tend this garden he has relocated to his house to ensure that there's an improvement the garden is more beautiful is more attractive than okay. he met it uh, i will relate this to you have made mention of flower i relate it to a flower a flower grows better and comes out finer when grown when nurtured, yeah. Not nurtured, now when it's grown. Okay, yeah, yes, really. At that very tender um, stage, you may not really know what the flower will look yes, like. Yes, really. But by the time it grows into a big flower and a tree, it blossoms, it looks very... Now, what is the secret? By the time you uproot the flower, you place it somewhere, you nurture it, you cultivate it. So, and then you water it daily so that it will look refreshed. Mm. So, and when you're not trying a flower, you don't water it today, and then after one month, you go to water it again. You go to water it every day. And you go and watch it, and you, you smile. It's coming out fine. It's growing. The same way is how that flower you pluck from somebody's house in the name of a wife. You nurture her. You cultivate her. You water her. You watch over her daily. And how do I mean? And you admire her growth. I'm coming now. <laughs> How do I mean? Make sure you, she looks fresher than you picked her every day of her life. Mm. It is an error to marry a beautiful wife and in, in five years down the line, she's looking frustrated and drained. You have killed her. Now, I have encountered most women that say, I, have, I lost myself after I got married. Mm. I have, at least in my little time in, in the therapy business, I, I, I have met nothing less than 10. And these are people that, some of them, not less than 10 years of marriage. So I lost myself. I am not happy, but I'm just pushing. And you're wondering. Because the man is not watering them. She's not cultivating them. Cultivate her. Cultivate her very well. Like, mm. you go and you remove the, the, the weed. The grasses. They yeah. Remove the weed, remove the grasses, and then pull manure. Water her. Let, and what is the manure? Give her money. Mm. 
Mm. Buy her new clothes. Very important. Yeah. Tell her this soap is good on your skin. You be then help her. When she's in the kitchen, there is a, this happiness when she's cooking, and then you join her in the kitchen, help her cut onions, help her test meat. You know, all those things. I test meat a lot. Not to finish the meat. Not, you may not, <laughs> test it cannot finish, she'll never finish meat. So help her. There is this bonding, there is this happiness. She feels okay, I'm appreciated. But most men don't even appreciate the efforts of their wives. Mm. So cultivate her, make her feel loved. You see her mopping. Okay, I will sweep, you will mop. How does that sound? Mm. A woman feels relaxed and she feels happy. But when the woman finishes from morning, Saturday is coming, a woman is working from 6 a.m. till 10 p.m. and Sunday she dresses to go to church, she needs to prepare the children. So it is an error to pick somebody's daughter and she looks worse than you picked her five, ten years down the line. It is lack of cultivation. Mm. Cultivate her. Go out, buy, if you, if you admire a good cloth outside, buy it for her. Mm. Don't buy the fine shoes just for yourself. Give her money, let her go for spa. Go and take care of herself. Do her nails, do pedicure and manicure. Come on. Make, make her know that what you are doing, I am appreciating it. And then above all, render assistance. Render collective effort brings youth more fruit. Mm. But individual effort has a limit it can go. Mm. So cultivate her. What is the summary of what I'm saying? Cultivate her. Mm. The way you cultivate a farm, the way you cultivate a flower to grow into a beautiful tree that will beautify your compound, cultivate your wife to be a sweeter person than the person you married, and you enjoy her the more. Anytime you touch her, she will respond. <laughs> Amazing conversation we have had so far. Cultivate her so that anytime you touch her, she will respond. I have nothing else to add. <laughs> All right. So, dear men, I hope you are convinced that help and assistance is the language of love. Every woman definitely understands and identifies with this language please help your wife in every way possible don't wait to be asked and when asked make time to love her by helping trust me she'll look younger happier and of course more appealing because love revives and rejuvenates the soul mm, i'm already feeling it a deserving thanks to our wonderful guests Barista Chims Mzeg, who happens to be my own beloved husband. Thank you for sharing this space with us. Thank and then, you. I'll seize this opportunity to say thank you for speaking the language of love, like, daily. You've been amazing. All right. So till we come your way again next week, same time, same station, remain in love and lovable. Keep speaking that language of love because you are worthy by design. I am Iberia Chimps. Bye now.